In today's story, Elena tried taking a magic potion which she thought would help her. Well, she found out there aren't any magic potions. And you know what? It's Darth Vader! Watch out! Drugs. And he's got a lightsaber! It's Kenner's Star Wars action figures, each sold separately. I got you now, Big Hill. My name is Optimus Prime. We are autonomous robotic organisms from the planet Cybertron. Impossible. The Hall of Justice under attack. Batman behind bars. You from Kenner's Superpowers Collection. Hall of Justice playset. Some assembly required. Vehicles and figures sold separately. Use the trap door, Batman! <laughs> Friends, the legendary Superpowers Show. Hey, welcome back to the Fooshcast. This is your hosts, Tony and Nick. Welcome. We're going to talk about toys, the toys that we all love so much, the toys that we love so much we want to marry them. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and it's probably going to become legal in several states here in the next few years. So. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, this week, uh, we're very excited to be joined by the Foosh's own Robo Killer. Hey, Robo. Hey, everybody. Hey. Um, uh, Robo, if, if you are a, a Foosh faithful, you certainly know him from the boards. Uh, he's been there really since the very beginning. Um, he's Wait, Robo, who's it? I'm, 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 I'm member number three. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. With something like one million posts on the boards or something like uh, that. that. That might be a slight exaggeration, but yeah. <laughs> but uh and so he's i mean you've really you've sort of served the foosh cause in many different capacities over the years i know um obviously i my first uh familiarity with you is probably like most people were uh, as a board moderator um because you were for a long time kind of like the primary moderator of the boards i think um I, I, at one time actually first started i was just a member mm -hmm. and uh it was just paul and uh, about a year into it, he called, as we grew, mm -hmm. uh, he called for moderators. And I had a little experience in that, so mm -hmm. I kind of volunteered, and it just kind of took off from there. So Cool. And, yeah. and now uh, you really do sort of the lion's share of the technical side in terms of, um, <laughs> right, in terms of uh, yeah. the board building and the website and, and all that. And now... Uh, you're also he is Oracle, <laughs> <laughs> um, and now you're into the doing the, the video reviews and running the Foosh YouTube channel. That's always been a bad habit of mine. I'll pick something up. I, I kind of volunteer. Mm -hmm. I volunteered for the tech side, and then I volunteered for you know laying out the website, and then as I get better at it, I get I lose interest in it. So <laughs> I, I still like doing it. But I like moving on to you know something new too. So right, so it's like I, I guess it, I guess it's just learning something new. Is so you're attracted to the challenge and learning something yes. new. But then once you sort of master it, then it's time to move on to the next. The yeah, next I, not, I wouldn't say master. <laughs> I'd say uh, <laughs> to the best of my ability, and right. then yeah, on to something new. Well, that's very cool, and um, I for one uh, thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> because oh, no. um, really, you know, the Fush has uh, been a great place and a great home for a lot of us, and you're one of the people who has been instrumental in creating that. So thank you, and I, it's great to have you here today. So um, we've got Robo, I'm getting pop-ups during this conversation. What's going on? <laughs> oh, I'll look into it as soon as possible. Can I, let me ask you this. First question, can I change my username? <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, only if I get to pick it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all you noobs, uh, there, there you have it. You can change your new username, but you have to go with one that that Robo picks for you. So, if that's still, <laughs> um, yeah, no. Uh, so we've got we're going to a lot of stuff for us to talk about today. I, I don't know where we'll start, but I think. Uh, good places with the with the video reviews because this is something um, obviously we've um, mentioned some of the video reviews in the podcast in the last few weeks when it's been something we've been also talking about um, but this uh, w the Fush uh, YouTube videos started about ooh, what six months ago maybe I we started the YouTube channel about six months ago but we really didn't get hard and heavy into it until uh, a couple months later so it's been about four months okay four and a half months um, and it's been really cool now I in, we covered a little bit of this ground um, previously but just to to retread a little bit I you know I personally have 
always been sort of turned off from video tour reviews in the past. Um, you know, there's a lot of them out there, and and they're all, and I don't want to like paint them all with one brushstroke, but because uh, there's you know obviously great you know degrees of variation between the quality and stuff, but you know a lot of them are really kind of bad with not very much thought put into it, and you know, um, but. The main reason, so there's you know there's that, but the main reason why I was never have never really been interested in them is I always even even the better better ones I always thought well what is what is this video review bringing me in terms of information or you know illumination of the product or something that I'm that I'm not getting from a static review where I can just you know kind of focus in on on set pictures and stuff you know why why does it have to be a video review and 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 for the most part I've I've never come across any that really answered that in the positive you know there's, there's very few and far between where it was something like oh you know this is great I never would have seen this or understood this about this product if it hadn't been in video now you know uh, right <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to no sound like a, a foosh <laughs> shill but the great thing about yours and cannonball's reviews is they they have felt like oh yeah this needs to be a video review like i'm i am actually getting something out of watching this as a video that i wouldn't get from a static review and it's all and even on like there's been a few figures that you guys have done a video review that um nick or somebody else has also done a static review on the on the regular site and it's kind of like great to have both of them they sort of complement each other um it, I, I completely agree and i used to feel the same way i mean before yeah. we and that's why i was so nervous about jumping into this was because i really had no interest in video reviews before and uh i, I don't know at, at first it was just to uh you know demonstrate articulation mm -hmm. uh range of movement mm -hmm. and that quickly just became into it just became full-blown reviews mm -hmm. Uh, only because with the work involved in making the video review and then turning around and writing a review, editing pictures, it, it just became easier to just put everything into the video. Mm -hmm. You, you know, I, I think to give some background on that is that uh, it, 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 if Pabs is nothing else, he's uh, gung-ho into exploring all kinds of new outlets and medias and opportunities for the site to expand and grow and kind of take advantage of and I, I remember when we were having this uh it, which what i guess it's fair to call a dreaded youtube conversation um <laughs> you know um yeah. some time ago um you know he, he he kind of he kind of put the question to us and um like the jerk that i am i immediately dropped out of the conversation <laughs> because <laughs> at, at the time um i was still extremely anti um video review and i i personally didn't really have anything um I didn't want anything to do with it. So, um, being the group that we are, that um, that kind of left Robo standing there being like, "Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, this and, is and a new like, challenge for me to learn." <laughs> like, like a, um, you know, the necessity, or at least the perceived necessity um, for it, um, is actually what drives our best results. And um, that stilted, awkward conversation about a, a topic that nobody really wanted to breach at the time um, has really turned into something really, really cool. And I, I can't believe how um, how I'm actually sitting here saying that uh, I, I, I now look forward to uh, video reviews from um, from people. And, and again, like, like Tony said, not just from a level of shill, but video reviews kind of, um, they're, they're like anything else. If you're ill-prepared, or you don't have a certain level of, of, of ability when it comes to um, doing something, it, it shows. But on video, I think it really exacerbates that. Um, yeah. So you really have to take the time and, and be cautious when, you, when you're doing something like this. And um, not hitting any cringeworthy moments or making sure that everything is in focus and covering the things <laughs> that are important about the figure without going off on some sort of tangent um it, it, to me is really the driver behind a good video review and and these guys um either by by studying ones around them or just coming up with their own thing uh independently um they they have definitely been able to hit that for me in just what like you said four short months yeah oh, so I, I, mm -hmm. I, and and starting these reviews i've i've grown to appreciate 
all the other video reviewers out there, I'm not saying I'm part of that group or anything because some of those guys are insanely talented in making the reviews. Mm-hmm. I'm still, I still feel like I'm learning. Uh, Cannonball still feels the same way. We have our own, we have our different styles. Mm-hmm. A Cannonball would go straight through one take, and you're talk, and you talk about, uh, a, you know, uh, <laughs> what I'm doing right now, stuttering along. I do a lot of editing in my videos to take out, you know certain things that I didn't like about the video uh, and uh, yeah I'm, I'm impressed with Cannonball how he can just run straight through a video yeah uh, what, what would I you can't s- do it what would you say is um, so far uh, in, in, in this new learning this new challenge what, what has been the most difficult thing um, either to, to sort of get your hands around either technically or uh, maybe the biggest thing that you hadn't hadn't occurred to you until you came up against it um i don't know what you know what are some of the biggest thing you know things you've learned <laughs> the uh the tech side not so bad i mean it, it came pretty quick but that's not you know, or so is work on tech stuff or, or learn tech stuff the biggest thing for me is uh i i still feel that i'm not quite comfortable in my you know Across, I, I I still can't watch my own videos. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't go back, and uh, I, I'll edit them. But as soon as they're posted online, I can't watch them again because I, during the editing stage, I, I've learned that I say so a lot. So <laughs> or, or but I say so and but constantly. Well, I'm, that's better than um and you know. So <laughs> I, you know, I, I, like I, I, like I, like. <laughs> Now, uh, one of the things that both Cannonball and I do the same way is we don't, uh, there's no script, there's no think, at, at least for me anyway, for the most part, it, there's no thinking. I open the box, I go into the review, because if I wait too long, I, I talk myself out of stuff. Oh, interesting. Uh, uh, certain negatives, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll say, oh, that's not so bad, which is, which is, you know, I've had some comments on some reviews that they like, that we just, you know, point out negatives as well as positives. Right. So you're saying, like, if, so, you know, when you when you open a, a new toy and your first, your first um, playing with it, if you know, say, like, uh, the range of motion on the elbow is is pretty limited, <laughs> your first reaction might be, oh, that's that's sort of a limited range of motion whereas if you right. wait play with it for a while you'd be like oh that's not so bad you know it's, it, it, he's not a kung fu fighter it's okay <laughs> no oh, no no it, it's a, it, for me I, the videos i'm happiest with is well actually the videos i'm happiest with is when the toy fell apart in my hands it's only happened a couple times <laughs> which one was that i've not seen that one I, it was the uh funko magic the gathering uh one of the girls oh. and just broke a car, broke apart in the torso. Oh and boy! It's just that initial shock reaction mm-hmm. that that I don't know. I guess that pure emotion of you know your toy right. breaking in your hand. Is, oh, I got to go back and watch that one for sure. Well, well, it, say, saying that saying that pure emotion, I, I think that that is something that you know your style of opening a toy and reviewing it right out of the box. I mean, that that's that's an opportunity to give. The, the most pure response to something new that you've just gotten, like you said, without thinking uh, through it. And I think that's kind of impossible to do from a static, you know, written review with pictures because you have to live with it so much before the review is actually completed. So mm-hmm. I never thought about that before, but you're right. Um, seeing that, you know, that initial gut reaction to something uh, is probably something that you're only going to get through a video review. Well, that and, you know, it, it works for the positive side, too. Uh, hidden, you know, like subtle paint apps, uh, some sculptures to the back of the figure, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I just like the spontaneity of it, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. Sure. Cool. Um, now, what do you guys, in terms of, you know, Fush uh, editorial, um, now that we are doing more of these video reviews and we obviously continue to do reviews on the site. Um, and sometimes, you know, you do it. 
it overlaps in terms of the toys you're covering. Now, I mentioned that I find them often to be complementary to each other, the site review and the video review together. Um, but do you guys have a, any sort of plan in terms of, um, you know, well, if we're going to we're going to do a video review of this one, maybe we either won't do a, a, a site review or the site review will be more limited or, you know, in terms of just choosing the, you know, what you guys are approaching in terms of the products. What goes I, 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 think, I think that when we make the decisions to do um, both the video review and a, a site review, um, oftentimes it's from, well, you know, we both got something. We both like it. We both want to give opportunity both on, you know, the, the YouTube channel and on the main site to do it. But but then I, I think the ones where we plan out a little bit more that, it, okay, well, we're going to do a video review and we're going to also do, you know, a, a, a static review on the front page is, you know, that that's usually the stuff that um, we consider to be, you know, the big hitters um, mm -hmm. from, from various lines that, um, you know, it, it's nice to be able to have a new Marvel Legends uh, product with a full pictorial review um, that, that is written and then embedded within the same article, you can go and actually watch the video review because they both offer things that are unique unto themselves. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, if you have someone who is not really into reading um, a review, mm -hmm. uh, then they can just go and look right at the video and you know it, it will come right to them and, and vice versa if you have someone who's not necessarily into watching video reviews then they can look at you know static pictures that offer a little bit more permanence um, cool. you know without you know moving moving past in a couple of seconds but I, I really think it does offer just more to um, one overall review where you get to hit all the different points be them be they moving mm -hmm. or, or static cool and then I, uh Oh, go ahead. The problem, the problem we've had so far is, people are used to just pictorial reviews on Foosh, mm -hmm. and the video thing is still new. It's still strange. It's still, you know, something different. So we haven't had much luck of just posting the video review on the front side. Mm -hmm. We we get complaints that you know, that they want to read it, they mm -hmm. want to see the pictures, right. but eventually I would like to move away, because, really. When it comes down to shooting the video, editing, editing the video, getting the video posted, by the time we turn around to write the written review, it feels like we're rehashing. Right. Sort of and doing and it. It, when I go back and reread it, it 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 feels uh, not quite finished because mm -hmm. because to me, I mean, as I'm writing it, I'm like. <laughs> I've already said all this. <laughs> I, I, I'm just going over the same. Yeah. And then editing the pictures, uploading the pictures, right. layout, everything yeah. else. So per, in a perfect, it'd be, you know, a video review by one person and then the written review by another person. Yeah. So, and then, and then on top of that, you get two points of view. I mean, mm -hmm. really, I'd like to see video review just praising the figure and then a written review just tearing it down. <laughs> but, but, but you know, it, it, it comes down. We all like toys. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not really a negative type of guy. I, I find I, if I buy a toy, I'm gonna like it 90 percent of the time. So <laughs> yeah, I, 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 easy to please, I guess. Yeah, cool, cool. Well, you know, another. <clears throat> Another thing that, that, Robo, that you're sort of known for, I guess you could say, um, around the foosh parts is, um, is customizing. You've been one of the longtime customizers at, at the site um, right. since, since the beginning. And, um, and within the customizing world, I think a, a lot of people would say that you're best known for your paint, your paint work. Um, so uh, I'd, I'd love to talk to you a little bit about that. That that came kind of from necessity. I, I couldn't sculpt with a dam, <laughs> so I thought, well, I I better pick an area and just go with that. So I'm not um, I'm not a well-rounded customizer. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely your your paintwork for sure is you know sort of I think that you could say it's the best of anyone that I know. I mean, there's other great ones too, but no, I don't I wouldn't. 
I couldn't think of anyone that I would say was better than you in terms of that is, is certainly in oh, that I, aspect. I, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, there's a lot of guys <laughs> out there that, well, and, um, especially lately. Yeah, you know, there has, it's interesting, the custom, the whole world of customs has gone through an interesting sort of evolution, I think, in the last year or a couple of years in terms of, um, it's, and this is, you know, totally unscientific, you know, there's no data or polling or anything on this, but it feels like there's sort of fewer people doing it than there was maybe five or six years ago. But there's, but the high the high end um, people have like gone to some crazy new level, um, and then and then there's more people in, in the sort of entry level end um, than there used to be. It seems like you know five or six years ago there was more people and they were all sort of closer together in terms of you know experience, talent, um, you know execution, and now there's maybe fewer, but more at each end does that sort of you guys feel that way i i I think it's i think it comes down to there's and i can't prove it but the the quality of figures coming out right now Mm -hmm. and the scope i mean just so many figures coming out from different companies that Mm -hmm. back when i started there wasn't there was DC Direct, but there wasn't any Marvel company. I mean, there wasn't any Marvel figures that were right. really coming out that mm-hmm. were six inch, you know. Mm-hmm. Of course, at that time, we didn't know much about Super Articulated. We were just taking DC Direct figures and turning them into Marvel figures. <laughs> but, or, or wrestling figures or right. whatever else. And then, you know, with Spider Man Classics, it just blew the doors off mm-hmm. possibilities of what can be made. And and I think there was a big rush at that time mm-hmm. for yeah. modern yeah, figures. I, 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 I think that I've never really fancied myself much of a customizer, um, but I, I have done some things in the past that were just really bred out of necessity. And by necessity, I all I mean is, is I want that character on yeah. my shelf. Um, but you know, uh, Robo's right. We're we're kind of in a, an age and a reality right now where. Um, with the exception of a few very point uh, things that I'm actually trying to get back into with customizing right now, it's really hard for me to come up with a lot of things that I say, gosh, I'm really going to need to customize this right now because either it's not on my shelf, but really anymore, it seems like it's just not on my shelf yet. There, right. there, there are so many exactly. you know, opportunities now that you don't have to take because so much stuff is getting done. Right, right. Yeah, I'm really sort of, um, for me, you know, and I, I don't have, you know, my, my volume of, of work is, is probably on the smaller side to begin with just because of time and stuff. But, um, you know, I go through it like everyone does. I think, you know, we go through phases where maybe you're sort of like, oh, you know, some of these golden age characters that I really want to do, and you do like a few of those and that, or maybe a team where you think, oh, I'm trying to fill out, you know, my Avengers or something. And you do a few of those, you know, um, but so right now I'm really moving away from the Marvel stuff because it's sort of like you were saying, Nick, it sort of feels like, well, that could be coming, you know, at any, at any moment. So, yeah. And, and, and for, for the longest time, I mean, I got into customizing really, um, kind of in the next iteration from what Robo was talking about is that he started with, you know, taking the only thing that existed as far as DC direct goes and turning them into Marvel. Well, when I started actually getting into it, it was, well, I've got all these Marvel Legends figures now that are <laughs> awesomely articulated, and then where the heck is all my DC stuff? That nobody's making <laughs> exactly. that stuff. And then Mattel came along and started doing DC Universe Classics, and that pretty much stopped me from doing any kind of customizing whatsoever, because by you know the fifth or sixth series, it was evident that they were really going to get into these characters that I originally thought weren't going to be possible. But right. now that that line has ended, uh, Tony, to your point, I'm I'm thinking about getting back into um, the DC side of things and, mm-hmm. and trying to do um, some of these characters that were were never made because for me it's it's representation on the shelf because mm-hmm. I've never been one that's going to say unless unless a figure just completely sucks I'm not the type of customizer that says I'm going to take this figure and I'm going to try to make it better as it stands right. on my shelf. Usually, if a character comes out and it's factory made, I don't mess with that figure. Right. Um, so it it really is the character representation, and um, so now with lines like you know DC 
um, classics being done, getting the characters that were never made in that line, maybe getting something uh, on myself as far as that goes. And um, I don't know. I, I work on some Masters of the Universe style integration with properties that kind of fit with it right now, and th that's really the only things that are that are catching me because everything else is too difficult <laughs> if, I, if I'm going to attempt it. So. Yeah, I'm definitely with you in terms of um, you know being motivated primarily by you know this is a, a character that I need to have in my collection that it that doesn't that isn't there I know there's a lot of guys who um, are really motivated by you know challenge challenges whether it be you know engineering or sculpt or something you know like grown nerd is a guy that comes to mind where um, you know I think he oftentimes will pick a project based on um, the engineering challenges you know like how could I how could I make that type of articulation work or how would you, how could I approach that character? You know, and he'll choose figures because of that. I think, um, for me, uh, you know, that's only comes up if it's necessity. You know, if I, if I decide, Oh, I've got to have a, a Larvox, you know, green lantern. And then it's like, Oh crap. How the hell am I going to do <laughs> What have I gotten myself into? <laughs> um, I would never choose a character because of that. But, um, I, I think you're right, and I think Grown Nerd is kind of, he's one of those guys that, he, he's the opposite of a customizer that, that I am a lot of the times. He, he like, lives the adventure of actually <laughs> customizing. To me, right. it's, I want this character on my shelf, and I want to just get to that point. <laughs> right, you know? right. Um, customizing, to me, is not something that I like to, you know, digest and, you know, think about and look at all these weird different new challenges in order to get something done. I want to be able to find the parts so I can put them together, paint them, and have the character on the right. shelf. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Brian, what about you? And, and then we have guys like Dis Thunder that, you know, once the right colored bases, no painting required, yeah. everything pieces together, which is a challenge into itself, you know, unto itself. But uh, me, I, I just, I, lately I haven't been doing anything. Uh, for me, it was mostly team building. Finish out, you know, or I'll I'll be so into a comic, I have to have the characters from that. Uh, painting challenges, uh, I usually go after. But if there's any sculpting involved or a lot of sculpting, uh, I, I talk myself out of it before I even start it. So, <laughs> yeah, I've I've I, I totally understand the uh, the, the disc thunder, um, you know wants and methods as far as that goes because to me the ultimate custom is, is one that um, you can find parts for and then the only stuff that needs to be painted is the stuff that doesn't move so that exactly. you can still retain <laughs> all of those all of those things that's why I love yeah. some of the guys that like me um, and whatnot who do these you know third party kits especially for Masters of the Universe stuff because mm -hmm. all they really do is give you the parts that like the heads or you know, little uh -huh. embellishments or weapons or whatnot, and then you can put that on a base figure as it stands, so you don't lose any of the articulation. But right. now you've got a totally brand new character um, yeah. sitting on your shelf. To me, yeah. that that's that's the ultimate. But I've it's gotten funny. to the point that stuff that I have to paint, I realize I'm going to paint it. It's going to sit on the shelf and it's never going to move. <laughs> right. And, yeah. And, no. It, and to that and to that point, mm -hmm. I, I I talk about paint challenges and all that, but mm -hmm. if it's going to be for me, if it's going to be standing on the shelf. And this is, I, I'm, very few people no. know this. But I, oh, he's going to say it. He's going to say it. I am. I'm going for it. <laughs> to hell with it. I, I don't even paint the backs. Oh, <laughs> that kills me. No. <laughs> no it's for someone else, which in the past year, I've probably painted more stuff for Nick than I have for me. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and, I, and he still has a waiting list of stuff that he's waiting for. But <laughs> I, I'll paint the back, you know, for other people. For me, though, I, as soon as the front's done and it looks good on the shelf, I'm uh -huh. I'm done. I don't care about art <laughs> articulation or movement. I, I'll even pick the pose before I paint. So I, well, it's just extra work to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh God. Well, everyone. Yeah. Any any customizer will tell you that you know. Obviously, um, the allowances and preparation you have to make in terms of articulation, if you want to retain articulation, with is the is the worst part of painting a figure and so you know you always get people oh, trying to find existing parts you know in the in the in the end up color so they you know the, already cast in the color that they're going to well, use and, and i think that's probably one of the reasons why so many guys 
well, and, and like me, migrate to customizing characters out of certain lines is because if you take a line like mm -hmm. what Marvel Legends has become now, or what DC Classics mm -hmm. was, or what He-Man is now, is that you're working with a set of base bodies and all kinds mm -hmm. of different colors um, that, you know, it, you, you stand a better chance of finding parts that you don't have to do anything with when right. you're Frankensteining, you know, your, right. at least the base body of your custom. That's been really one of the exciting things recently for me to look at, and I don't even collect masters, but um, but that's a line that is sort of has the abundance of the third-party add-on things that you're talking about that people have made, and they've made some really cool-looking, great stuff for, um, for that line and, and for other stuff. But um, but it's exciting to me to see that the possibilities in that because I, I think it's only a matter of time before that really bleeds over into more DC and Marvel type stuff. You know, I was think we talked about um, in the past uh, Thor being a you know a, a classic comic Thor being a, a character that I'd love to see revisited in Marvel mm -hmm. Legends using some of the new bodies, um, and that is a great example of you know where you could take you know either a Hyperion or Sabretooth, you know some figure that had that that bulkier legends body which is what i've loved to see thor done on um you could make a thor with just add-on parts you know with just yeah. um i mean obviously you'd have to repaint but um but in terms of you know there wouldn't be it, 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 you wouldn't need additional sculpting if you had you know a third party head um maybe a couple of deco pieces or boot things or something that you could that could just go straight on to a body and then you would be you'd be pretty much set you know it wouldn't require it's not something that requires you know your own sculpting ability or things like that yeah i would i would love to see some of the guys that are um you know knocking out all this cool mm -hmm. masters of the universe stuff kind of spread their wings a little bit into the dc yeah. side of it as well because obviously that system works perfectly mm -hmm. um, right. with the you know the, the same way I, I would love to see that expand because the more i look at my dc shelf even if even if it is one of the you know biggest ones in the in the toy room, I start seeing what's not there, and, yeah. and 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 the projects that will probably lie ahead for not only me but you know my friends who I bully into helping. Me <laughs> with those yeah, types I'm really <laughs> I'm really itching to get my my legion of superheroes filled out a little more. <laughs> I've got some I've got some uh, Justice Society uh, standouts that uh, that that need to get done at, the, at some point. But sure, you know. sure. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, Johnny Thunder's Thunderbolt was always one of my. Well, last... you know, the, the the cool part about it is, is that I, I hate to refer to a line like this, but um, when a line goes dead, um, it, it it kind of has this weird effect in the toy room too. It's like I don't take it down if I really love it because it represents stuff that I've always wanted, but I find myself not looking at it quite as much when I'm in right. the toy room or paying mm -hmm. as close attention to it anymore. So being able to add characters later um, through customizing or whatnot is it, really, you know, a way to keep that line going um, mm -hmm. with, with, with guys that you never had the opportunity to get from a, a factory point of view. Yeah. But so, for, for me, that goes all the way back to what I was talking about earlier about learning something, getting uh, mm -hmm. decent at it, and then moving mm -hmm. on. I, I, that falls into my collecting, too. When I finished my Secret Six project, I would poured so much mm. heart and soul into it <laughs> That as soon as I was done, which I'm not technically done, but as soon as I was done with <laughs> with, with the main group, I, I I don't know if I bought many DC figures after that because in my head I considered my DC collection complete. Yeah, I, right. And I moved back on to Marvel Legends, which my whole collecting uh, quote unquote career. I, I I as soon as I find that something new and shiny. I, I move, I, you know, the other ones go in the bin. So, I don't know. I, I'm weird like that, I guess. Interesting. Well, well, we're still on the lookout for that perfect liberty. So, we'll find out. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> for the perfect yeah. what? Yeah. The liberty perfect well hair. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Look, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, I feel like she, God, that's just as a, as a sidebar, I feel like she was probably one of the next figures we would have got from that. Oh, line. trust me, I've been I've been boring Robo with talk of that figure since what, like D the DC superheroes days. I think. <laughs> I've had like three base bodies and six hair pieces 
ready to put together. And as soon as I start piecing it together, it just doesn't look right. I don't know what the deal is. Hmm. Damn you, Jean Grey movie version. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so close. Yeah, so I thought we were going to have some help with Moonstone, too, but you're right. It doesn't have that little forehead kind of drape. But it's, oh. Interesting. Ah. Well, you got some new figures coming out soon, so maybe... Yeah, Maybe something will be yeah. fun. And you know what's kind of kind of cool? This I'm sort of going going on a tangent here, but um, this sort of relates to the sort of third party stuff and just generally the, the the custom the possibilities in customization now, either through more people doing casting or um, through 3D printing and stuff. But um, you know, in the past, you know, if you were a six inch guy or a one twelve guy, um, and you're looking for parts, you're sort of limited. In you know trying to source parts from other figures from the same scale, but now it's like oh if you find you know a 12 inch figure that has the right head, you could ha- you could have somebody cast it and, and shrink shrink it down to the right scale. Or, yeah, it, that that, um, that type of stuff is just that, that that kind of blows the doors off of everything because when you've got guys like Glassman who right. can take and literally change scales completely or. Mm-hmm. Uh, do factory correction like um, mm-hmm. he did for oh. me with that uh, episode 3 Obi-Wan Kenobi Star Wars Black figure. Everybody mm-hmm. hated that figure when it first came out because it didn't look like Ewan McGregor because the paints were right. were terrible and the head was way too small. The minute the glass man got done bringing that head up to mm-hmm. scale better and everybody saw it unpainted, it was like, that's got one of the best likenesses in the entire line. So right. you're right. It's just that that type of avenue that you can explore now it really makes a lot of the possibilities endless. <laughs> well, yeah. he did the, he did the same thing for Puck too. I I didn't mm-hmm. really care for that build a figure until I got the resized head. Yeah. I mean, it, it looked just like a miniature human, but then it brought it all together just by mm-hmm. a, you know a slight size change. Yeah. I, it's and I look at that. I, it's like magic. I, mm-hmm. I, I have yeah. no idea how it works. Are you some kind of wizard, <laughs> sir? Are you yeah. a <laughs> <laughs> But it's very cool. I mean, it does sort of blow, like you say, blow the doors off the whole thing. Um, and, and obviously, you know, 3D printing as well. It's just only going to get well, more and more Well, you know, I, I think a part of it, too, for me is, is that it takes a hobby that I consider to be relatively passive mm-hmm. um, because I, I like the figures and I get them and I put them on a shelf and I have them to enjoy and to admire. But, um, you know, just because of my schedule or how things go for me i i things don't get as tactile as they probably should um anymore but it the the whole customization part of it brings it to life a little bit more so that you you kind of live with it and then you know stuff eventually goes on the shelf and and that's and that's where it belongs for me but um it 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 just brings another level to to the hobby right well speaking of another level like uh let me let me go back to painting a little bit um so, Robo, you use airbrush, correct? Uh, every now and then. I, I've moved. I tried to jump right in with doing detail work and stuff with the airbrush, but mm-hmm. I, I found that the, the brush is a lot better, for me anyway, for that oh, kind of stuff. I, I use the airbrush for base coating, shading, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So, um, I, that is something, I mean, that is, uh, it's interesting to hear you say that uh, for a lot of stuff you still prefer the brush, because I've, all, I mean, I'm, Personally, I'm a brush guy, and it's it's really more necessary. I mean, I, I just don't have the space or inclination to do all the setup that would be required for an airbrush. Um, it's and, some work, yeah, yeah. And and but I know, you know, I see I see guys that work with the airbrush, and it it does sort of take it to a new level in terms of a lot of the stuff. Um, I guess especially for base coats, shading, or just evenness. If you're if you're doing you know, line work or stuff like that on a figure. Um, but um, wh- how, how, when did you first pick up an airbrush? Like, how, how far into the game were you uh, before you first? <laughs> Man, uh, let's see. I, technically, I started the customs about 97 mm-hmm. with uh, the uh, three and three quarter Star Wars figures. That's all oh, I was wow. collecting up until uh, Spider Man Classics. Oh, wow. And, uh, Let's see. I, I I started with just straight brush. I I probably those pictures are actually floating around out there somewhere on some of the Star Wars <laughs> sites. But uh, 
I, it was quite a ways in. Uh, I started with a crappy airbrush, which I still use. I, I, <laughs> it's easier to clean up. It's just a basic kind of, uh, you know, you, you switch out the nozzles for different uh, sprays. Mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't get hot and heavy into it until I was in L.A. And uh, I don't know how much I'm supposed to say of this, but I, I kind of uh, watched Kat Sapine. She uh, oh, okay. She's a painter for Disney, and she does some mm -hmm. wrestlers. And I don't know what she's been doing lately, but at that time, it was uh, Disney wrestling, uh, you know, uh, contract work. Mm -hmm. And she just amazing airbrush work so I came home spent the money on a nice airbrush and uh, didn't grow in talent as I <laughs> kept on using it I, I could get the same effects and stuff with the airbrush that I had been using for a couple of years uh -huh. so I, I think if I sat down and used it for eight hours a day uh -huh. it would probably come a lot easier right but just doing custom work, uh, unless I have like a pile of figures to airbrush, it's not worth the setup. But for me, right. anyway, it's not worth the setup, and then the work involved, and then the cleanup, and uh, it just, like you said, it's a lot of work. Right. But sometimes the results are worth it. Right. Uh, right. But if I can get the same effect with a paintbrush just by turning on, in my desk chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and pulling out a brush, <laughs> painting something real quick, and then turning back. I, I, I usually lean towards that. Cool, cool, interesting, interesting. And um, what do you have a particular uh, brand of paints that you like, or does it vary depending on you know this brand is better for this pigment, or or this brand is better for washes, or? I. It's actually whatever I can pick up. I'll use I'll use cheapy Walmart Apple Barrel. I'll use the. Most most of mine are the uh, what is it, testers model master. Mm, yeah, I like those a lot too. But it's hard to find uh, the breadth of colors. I find right exactly. Mm -hmm. So I've I've moved into a little uh, Tamiya, mm -hmm. Vallejo, Vallejo, however you say it. Oh right, uh, right. And uh, really anything I can pick up. I I haven't really got into expensive expensive paints, but right. Because, man, they get expensive. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh. they do get expensive. I've, I've spent some money on brushes, mm -hmm. and in the long run, it is worth it to, you know, spend the money on good brushes. Mm -hmm. But as far as paint's concerned, I'll mix and match, and uh, I'll add, I think for one of Nick's figures, what what were we using, like a, gold, uh, a flake to make it... Uh, kind of a shiny I, I can't even remember what it's called that's how long it's been but, <laughs> oh, yeah, like a, like yeah, a gold yeah, leaf yeah. or something yeah uh, but uh, I'll mix and match but most of the time I stick with I, I think painting the biggest thing is your sealer so oh well cool well since you bring that up um, let me ask you about what you use because for me um, I use uh, and I uh, Assuming I'm sealing something, sometimes for whatever reason I'm not, but um, I use Tester's Dull Coat, basically. Oh, that's that's my go-to. That's the yeah. only one I've ever used. Oh, cool. And but I, now, I'll let use... me ask you this. Go, go Sorry, go ahead. No, I, and I use a lot of it. I mean, I'll start... <laughs> if I'm painting dark colors, I'll spray a layer of Dull Coat, put on some paint, Dull Coat it, put on some details, Dull Coat it. It's a constant sitting, you know in my bathroom <laughs> spray dull coat so um and now what about for if you have a character that because that does come out a little more flat than like a factory figure would look right um, so sometimes you know in terms of integrating in a collection or whatever but for most most of the time for me at least uh i'm 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 fine with that but if you have a character that for you know whatever reason it should be shinier let's say it's like iron man or something like that you know the character that that really can't be flat um what do you turn to in those cases because i've that's when it's more it's tougher for me because they do tester's gloss coat can work okay but it can be pretty thick it can build up sometimes in the in crevices and stuff and over time it gets kind of foggy right and then there's there's some of the in-between sprays that are supposed to be like um 
you know, half matte, half gloss. And those um, always look strange to me. Like they, they just look, um, the, the, the surface looks like stipply sometimes mm-hmm. or just it looks weird. So what do you do when, when it's a character you can't use the dull coat for? That's when I turn to my old, old bottle of uh, Pledge floor wax <laughs> <laughs> with, with Future Shine. I think they still sell it. It's not mm-hmm. under the same brand, but you can still see the little uh, Future logo at the bottom. But it's, right. in, the, it's in the floor cleaning supplies. And well, uh, I use that that on like inside of mouse. And, well, for a character like say uh, like Iron Man, mm-hmm. I'll I'll load that into the airbrush and uh, just spray it on straight. But it also works. Dull coat the whole figure and then come back and punch in the eyes, punch in the you know the wetness right. of the mouth, mm-hmm. that oh, kind of cool. thing. Mm-hmm. I, I just on a brush. Of course, you have to have a brush that's dedicated to that because it screws it up. Big right, time. right. Well, yeah, I remember uh, uh, some time ago you gave me that tip um, about floor wax when I was making a uh, Chasselon uh, Green Lantern mm-hmm. figure, and um, I was having a hard time, and, and I actually used it on on him, and it came out came out great. Oh, um, I, 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 there's a lot of weird things about Future. I'm like, uh, I've seen people use it on clear figures to uh, mm. make them even more clear, like uh-huh. the uh, what the Gummy Vision. Oh right, way uh-huh. back. It, it just, it, hey, I don't know what it does. Again, magic. Uh, <laughs> I, and I, how do you? I, I don't really get into the technical side of it. You know, if it works, I'm going to keep right. using it. So. And how do you find that it? Um, you know, over time, um, is that something? You, do you need to? If you've got a figure that you've waxed, um, mm-hmm. so to speak. I mean, I guess. You know, like if you if you were waxing your kitchen floor, you know, at some point in time, you got to sort of go back over it, buff it. But I, mean, I don't know, but that's a floor that you're walking on all the right. time. Maybe and with a it, figure, it's a lot it's of traffic. Right. And I don't know how it works for say, uh, you know, if you have a figure that's still fully articulated, you still play mm-hmm. with. Like right. a, all of mine, they don't get touched again. Well, they get touched. Right, right. I move them right. around, but they don't get you know reposed right. or anything. So I don't right. know. So it's so I haven't had a problem so far. Right. Cool. Cool. And what's on what's on your workbench right now? <laughs> Anything? <laughs> I do. I have uh, some snakes, some Masters of the Universe snake men. Ah, okay. That cool. have been sitting for I, I I don't even want to think about how long they've been sitting there. <laughs> I, I work on one every now and then when I and then when I send Nick a package, I send one back at a time. Just a, just a, you know, hey, and they're awesome. Please. That that um, was that was the gold flake, one or silver flake or something like that. You put yeah. that on the green snake, right? Yeah, but other cool. than that, I, I'm, I haven't read com, I haven't read a comic in a year, for no reason whatsoever. I just haven't had time. Mm-hmm. But uh, I would really like to do another astonishing X Men team. Oh, cool, mm. yeah. Yeah. Kitty Pride has some room for improvement by this point. Exactly, and so does yeah, Cyclops. Sure. And now that well, has the uh, since you started out doing Star Wars stuff in the three and three quarter, has the Star Wars Black started started getting your juices flowing in that direction again? You, you know, I haven't. Oh, he has. It. He painted Obi Wan. You painted oh, yeah, Obi Wan. I did, <laughs> I did paint it. I, I painted two, and that's another thing I don't like to do. If if I've done one figure once, uh-huh. I never like to do it again. But I did paint two heads at the same time. And then I sent Nick the better one, just to say, <laughs> because I'm a, my I'm my own worst critic. I, I can't show other people my you know in person at, at Comic Con. People are talking, why don't you bring customs? Because they suck. <laughs> <laughs> to me, you know, they look okay yeah. in a picture, but mm-hmm. I don't know. In person, you can point out the flaws, and then they'll flip it over and see the back's not painted, and <laughs> you know. But with the Star Wars black. Actually, I was I posted the uh, promo pictures for the uh, Bosk and Wampa. Looking at Bosk, I really want to make a bow check. So, oh, ooh. sure, yeah, yeah. That and that may open floodgates because right. I mean, I, I remember making a bow check way, way back. And he's the uh, he's the the starship pilot in the cantina, right? Yep. The sort of yep. human guy with the yeah. Yeah, he's wearing Bosk's uniform. And he's got 
he's got the big 70s sideburns. Oh, yeah, right? definitely. Yeah. And, yeah. and with as many heads as we have in the six-inch scale, surely I can come across something that... Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. ...won't require a lot of sculpting. Yeah. Yeah, those, cant- those cantina aliens, that's always the thing to fill out. Well, right? you, you, and, mentioned, you mentioned the Wampa, too, um, from, the, from the looks of... The, the package pictures, you may just have um, a light painting exercise ahead of you for him as well, because it looks like he lost some uh, some paint de- detail from, from prototype I, to final I can't believe here. I can't believe they didn't paint his horns. For, yeah. It, I, that's just weird to me. Well, I, I, I'm hoping that, because if you remember when they showed the, the, the carded images of Anakin Skywalker, he had that kind of white cloth yeah. um, underneath. I'm hoping that that might be the case with this, because that is a glaring omission that's like a myth well, not just well, a, it, something that they removed yeah i mean it's it, there's what three paint applications on it right now they added all the red for the around the mouth but mm-hmm. not the horns I, yeah. it's just oddball and i see a lot of people complaining already about the possibility of the right shoulder being a swivel but i don't know it, oh yeah it's it's kind of hard to tell and but it does look well you know what it uh, I'm looking at the picture right now, and what you're talking about is the left shoulder arm. On the arm, the left shoulder looks like, looks to be sort of a ball joint, yeah. but the right does look like a cut swivel. But I wonder if that's because it's removable. Yeah, I think that's probably why they did it. And I think that's it. I mean, or that, and maybe the fur sculpt is covering something i don't know it could be yeah it is it is hard to tell so it's possible that it's possible that we could just be missing something because that fur like you said that first sculpt comes out further on the other side it's hard to tell plus it's been a long time since i've seen empire did he cut at the shoulder or did he cut at the elbow i i i I mean my memory it's the elbow but um but i can't remember for sure now here's where we here's where we get a bunch of people online saying jesus these guys think they have a podcast and they don't even know if the wampa got cut at the shoulder or the elbow jeez it's star wars it's only 30 years old is it 30 40 60 (laughs) it's a long time ago yeah the last copy of empire and return of the jedi i had well i actually still have is vhs and I don't have a VCR, so. Oh no! Yeah. I guess no I'll Blu-ray have... special editions. No, 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 <laughs> not yet. I am excited about this Bosque figure because he, um, well, you know, he's the perfect example of a Star Wars character that had, you know, like forty seconds of screen time, but is like so cool looking that has he has a huge fan following, you know. It, um, is it sad? I like him better in the package than the loose shot. No, I think I agree with you, and I, and, I, and that that kind of touches on something that I was going to mention. It seems like now, and I could be wrong just because my my eyes are playing tricks on me, but it's like it's it's, it's like some of these recent figures, and I, and I remember you know, that Boss was actually done in house uh, by a Hasbro sculptor because he really liked Boss and he wanted to 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 be the one to, to sculpt him but some of these guys like the the Bush Leia and um, you know the, the, the Han and Luke that are the, the Hawk Han and Luke that are coming out they I don't know they're starting to look a little less like six inch figures and more kind of scaled up three and three quarter inch Agreed. figures Agreed. which yeah. is kind of Hasbro's internal signature so mm. I, I don't know that that's I don't want to, you know, start screaming, you know, and being afraid of it right now, but that to me can be a little concerning at this point, even. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting, because the thing that this line really has going for it is, was all that real close attention to detail and the sort of, you know, the the well, intricacy and care put into the, it by the, the thing that The thing that I always go back to with that is, is that the work that was done, especially on the early waves, is that... I think it was your pictures, Tony, actually, from uh, the Toy Fair, where mm. the first series was debuted. People were getting into arguments online on whether or not the pauldron on that right. sand trooper was sculpted or if it was actual cloth because of the pull right. that it had on there. And to me, when you can cause an argument like that, yeah. you're doing something right. <laughs> yeah, I remember it was funny. There was one person in particular who was saying, you know, why would they, you know, use the soft goods or what, you know, mm-hmm. and I was like, no, it's, that's sculpted. And, and the guy was like, 
no, look at it again. It's clearly, but, and yeah. I was like, listen, I took the picture. <laughs> yeah. And then he was like, oh, okay, well, if that's the case. <laughs> so, so basically what you're saying is give it all to General John. That's exactly what I'm saying. Give yeah. it all to General yeah. John. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't really have a problem with Bosk, but. No, he's fine. Like you said but... with the others, it, it's, it's apparent. It's, there's a change. Yeah. Well, I am glad in terms of selection. I'm glad that uh, we're seeing him because it means that you know, even though you know Greedo, even though he was such a great figure and still sort of peg warmed, that that's not going to put them off of doing other characters like that. Yeah, it's, it's a damn shame that uh, Greedo turned into the peg warmer that that he did because he's to to me he's probably top three as far as sculpts go in the line so far. He's 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 perfect. Um, you know, the, I think the only way that they could have made that figure more perfect if we would have had swappable feet, um, so that the stand-in that they had for Greedo was the the lady that wore high heels on set. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you could have created that, but um, yeah, he's that he's he's a tragic uh, Black Series figure because I I love that figure. Well, because it'll be interesting so to well. see how Bosk does in that case. He was always Bosk was always my, one of my absolute favorite figures back in the you know in the early days when I had the original. Oh, I I even like Dengar. I mean, it, the bounty hunters, <laughs> something about them. I don't know. I, yeah, that's the ones I'm most excited about at this point. I, yeah, definitely a Dengar. <laughs> well, do we have any? Um, do, what do we know in terms of uh, release dates for some of these next um, six inch black figures? Well, we know that I, it's Yoda, the clone commander. And uh, tie a tie fighter, yeah, tie fighter pilot. They're coming next, but I, I would guess they're a month away or so. Right, but yeah, we'll definitely actually, see them by I the wonder, end of the year. I though. wonder if the Yoda, if the Yoda wave might already be here, but you know, um, there's stock strikes going on right now. Oh, sure, in, yeah, uh, in yeah. Southern California. So um, it, it seems like it's right about at that point in time when they were showing up on the Chinese eBay sites. Mm-hmm. And just enough time has passed now that it's like if it's anything like the the last assortment, it's like hmm, we should be we should be seeing these in stores, you know, really really soon now. So, right, um, and um, and the Bausch Leia, um, uh, does that is that slated? Because I know these aren't necessarily waves like we traditionally think of waves, but is that supposed to come out uh, closer to the to the Yoda series? Or I, I think I think series? she's in the in the IG eighty eight way, which was yeah, the, oh, right, the right. after yeah. the Bosque. Okay, so that's yeah. prob- really probably the spring. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But at the same time, they're only showing two single carded figures. So, right, who's going to mm-hmm. make up the other two figures in that case? Well. There was a wasn't there a Luke stormtrooper or was that a three and three quarter? Figure? No, that was. I, I think he comes later. Okay. Which is interesting too because if you've pulled the head off any stormtroopers or any of the human characters, there's a huge ball neck difference. So I don't know mm-hmm. if they changed the torso or if they changed the heads for you know to make them compatible for the stormtrooper. Oh right. Well, and I wonder what they'll look like because it is. Um, it's a. I'm looking at the Han. I'm assuming that's a swappable head and not a helmet that actually fits over his head, right? I don't know. That there's something a little off about that helmet that to me Definitely. says that uh, that's going to go over his head. Right. Well, and that's what I'm wondering. If you put them next to the regular stormtroopers, I wonder how, what if it's going if you're going to see differences or how that works. It does look a little well, big. I'll tell you right now, if they use that regular stormtrooper body for Luke, there's definitely going to be a contingency of people who are going to be pleased. <laughs> yeah. Aren't uh, you know, people that. would say, aren't, aren't you perfectly height? <coughs> yeah, exactly. Aren't you a perfect height for a stormtrooper? <laughs> <laughs> that damn retconning. <laughs> but in the pictures that you took at, or what, a couple months ago? Was mm-hmm. it? Uh, it was uh, the, pre, uh, the pre-New the York Comic Con event. Yeah. It, it, it did kind of look like Luke had a shorter torso it so. did but it was just hard because there was nothing right. to contextualize it with but it did just from the just from looking at it by itself it did kind of look like that but it's hard to say but right now at this point i don't see anybody buying those figures just to be you know to round out their stormtrooper army not with right now yeah. stormtroopers are easy to get so mm-hmm. and that's what you would have thought <laughs> that's not even mentioning all the you know the bandai and the sh figure arts and oh god we could do a whole um, Speaking of customizing, I, I, even oh. even Vader being the Frankenstein character that he is, I think um, Darth Vader 
Star Wars Black is going to turn into a, a big time um, Frankenstein figure here in the in the future with some of those releases that Robo was just talking about. I think I've already committed to buying every Vader from Ooh. every company. Just Have you to, told your wife I, that yet? <laughs> she doesn't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say now, if you're gonna if you're gonna lay that out there, then I want you to do a video review that has all of them. You Definitely. can compare them all at the you know get against each other one to one basis, and we can make because for me, you know that like uh, I'm I'm definitely. <clears throat> Haven't haven't been a completist on the Star Wars Black and and wasn't you know intending to be. I definitely was interested in picking out the ones that I wanted, but um, but but Vader was one of those ones where I was really sort of on the fence. Like he was almost a character that I had to have. I mean that sounds crazy. That why wouldn't Darth Vader be one of the your automatic Star Wars characters? But mm-hmm. for me, you know, just in my face, I was like sort of on the fence whether he would be one. And then because you know it it seemed when the figure came out it didn't seem to be perfect that made me end up sort of not getting it but um i it's i still have really haven't made up my mind and the fact that all these other six inch vaders have been coming out has really like made it even harder for me to decide so um i need you to tell me which one to buy but yeah, exactly. <laughs> just looking at the frankenstein onto the black series i need the best uh, looking at the pictures i mean they all have their you know, high points, and then mm-hmm. they all have their low points. So uh, right. it's going to be a crapshoot. Uh, right. But I think the Bandai model kit comes out next week, and I have wow. it on. Or so I, there will probably be a video of it okay. quickly after that. Cool. And it'll be interesting too because they are all, you know, all the ones that we're sort of thinking of here are technically they're six inch, but I wonder if they will be how. App, how compatible they would be in terms of mix and matching parts and stuff at side, you know, scale wise. Because sometimes if it's off, if the scale's off just a little bit, then you sort of end up well. You know, I like this head better, but it's actually too small for this body. That's that when you it. call glass man. That's <laughs> when you call glass man. <laughs> and get some future wax on the helmet. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> See down. Uh, you know, I, all of the plastic capes. I don't know how much I like, but then again, I don't like cloth either. So, I, what are you I, gonna do? I think in the long run, he's just a hard character to yeah. translate because I think the three and three quarter inch line. How many have they made that made aren't million. quite perfect? You know. Oh right, right, sure. So well, and he's he's another one of those characters too. It's like, do I want to commit to improving the one? that I have on the shelf right now, or do I want to wait for them to take another crack at, uh, at, at doing another one? Because, right. you know, I, I, I can't imagine that they haven't heard or seen the, the criticisms of that, that figure, so I, I would love to see them. And I mean, I guess I consider the one that we got to be, you know, uh, Return of the Jedi, mm-hmm. um, Darth Vader, even though he's got things from the other movies on that, so give, give me a, a New Hope or a, a, an Empire version right. of Darth Vader in the future well, let's see if we can't that's the other thing better. about that that's the other thing about Vader in particular is that you it seems like oh he's you know he has had you know one look he looks but you know there are those not only are those there are those minor differences in his actual you know costume if you will from the three movies but you have things like you know with the removable head which is not a the removable helmet, which is not just a removable helmet, but it's like three pieces yeah. of removable helmet. So it's like, well, do you want your figure to have that feature, which is a you know important part of like Return of the Jedi, for instance? Um, uh, so if you say yes, you know, I want the figure that has that, then that you know alters what it can look like when it's all put together because you know you've suddenly got to make pieces thick enough to snap on or big enough to fit over something you know and so that, but then if you say well i want the helmet you know to be more properly scaled and look better when it's all together then you sort of eliminate the ability to have that you know the three-part takeaway thing so it's sort of like what do you you know I, it, it kind of seems like they tried to to make one universal vader figure and, and sort of suffered a little bit which yeah, which that. for something as long as i've well not lately but Way back when I used to do, you know, Star Wars forums, that's not the way to go. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. People want, you know, is the chain supposed to be black or silver? Is there a chain? Is there right. not a chain? Right. The silver shoulder pad, or is it supposed to be black? 
They can't right. do it. Well, they can't do an amalgam of all right. the costumes. And then you know, it, it, and then you also get into stuff that you know Nick and I have talked about before with the Black Series, it, which is, and this goes for other movie properties, but especially the Black Series where they're trying to be you know really screen accurate. And it's like, well, what is screen accurate? You get into the the Hoff, Han Solo. Is he wearing a blue coat or a brown coat? Oh, good lord! Um, yeah, because <laughs> because you know there's things with movies. You know, it's like oh yeah, if you go to the you know the the studio and look at the actual prop or costume, you know, firsthand, it looks like this. It looks blue or it looks black or whatever. But once it's filmed, depending on how they film it, the lighting, etc., it looks it may look completely different on screen. And so then, what is screen accurate? The actual item itself. Or what it looked like on screen. Yeah, I, mean, I, I don't think most people would believe that Darth Vader was actually in navy blue and not black. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that goes into like that plays into like you know heights of characters and stuff. You know you have a character where you know the actor may be a certain height, but on screen they you know they're shooting him or her in a way to make them either taller or shorter or something. And so it's like, well, which you know, do you want the figure to be the height of the actor that portrayed it, or do you want it to be the, the height that it appeared to be on screen? Well, and, that, you know, that, that was the point. shocking thing, of, and I know we've talked about it, about the Chewbacca figure, I think, for a lot mm-hmm. of people at first, is that, wow, you know, out of the package, he looks taller than he ever really was on screen, but they went with <laughs> the actual right. Peter Mayhew height, um, mm-hmm. and in the long run, I'm glad they went that direction. I love giant chewy <laughs> yeah yeah I, I yeah i agree it seems like they're they are going for the you know sort of tr- real world accurate in terms of scale and stuff and i and i'm glad because then you know then you can sort of decide for yourself you're almost like you almost become the movie maker um you know how am i going to display these guys do i want do i want to display han you know standing on a box <laughs> or something you know <laughs> like or you know whatever it is um you you it gives you more um or if you're doing, you know, if you're someone that does figure photography or something, it gives you the more options. Um, just like if you were the director working with the, you know, people those various heights. And stuff. I think I, I, I know a lot of people get nitpicky about that, but I think I fall into the relative scale mm-hmm. uh, group, especially after what 10, 13, 14 years of Marvel Legends, yeah. <laughs> where yeah. where people, you know, I I like this based on this artist, but the handbook says. He's six foot six. And <laughs> the handbook. <laughs> yeah, I never yeah. go to the handbook. And no, I it's like the yeah. same way with any line. If so, if Hulk is taller than Thor, and Thor is taller than Cap, and Cap's taller than Rick Jones, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm I'm pretty much. I mean, I do. You know, I'm pretty much of that school. The only the only exception being, you know, and this is sort of a modern trend in the comics, which is bled over into the figures. But that like, you know, big quote unquote big characters or strong characters are have gotten super big yeah. you know, just to sort of accentuate the thing you know so like the thing and the hulk or like Thor, even Thor. Thor. even just Thor, say yeah. the wrecking crew just say yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that and that's the thing too when they you know we, those were such anticipated figures and they came out and they were so the figures were so big and a lot of people you know myself included were like oh well they're you know and i, I personally you know I, I i can live with it but um, as a lot of people pointed out, look at the their recent comic appearances, and that's actually how big they're rendered in the comics these Good days. Lord. So. And yeah, I, I tend to I tend to gravitate towards newer interpretations, for the most part. Mm-hmm. It, well, it, it's it's a daily thing. Tomorrow I'll be uh, only like classic, but <laughs> I, and that's another that's another where customizing comes in again. You know, it's just finding what you like. Right, right. Well, and I, yeah, my rule of thumb is always, you know, is this um, a better representation? Is this figure a better representation of this character than we've had yeah. so far? And sometimes, if it's you know, if it's the first <laughs> um, representation of that character, then it's automatically the you know. Yeah. But there are some people who are like you know, even if it's a the first attempt at a long-awaited character, if they're you know, if it doesn't satisfy you know whatever critique they may have they'll go ahead and pass on it for me it's got to be pretty bad <laughs> you know as long as it's as long as it's um either a, you know the first version or or the the best version so far of a character that i want then i'll, I'll probably get it well with the wrecking crew we, we have three quarters of the team and yeah 
I, I got them on the shelf. I liked them. And the, a day later, I wanted the, uh, what, what's the thug look? I, I, they were wearing uh, beanies and oh, uh, right, Scott, right. Scotty, Scott Scotty. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember what the artist's name was, but yeah, I, I don't know why. I, I like that interpretation too. I'm, like, I'm easy to please, but picky mm-hmm. every other day. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like there's so many great, you know, like I'm, I'm generally a classic guy um, because, you know, the, what I, and I think this is pretty common, like the characters that I'm interested in that I want in my collection are characters that I made a connection with at some point over time. And so you want, if you, want, if you get a figure of them, you want them to be in the design that, of which you remember them. Um, so it's not necessarily that, you know, the quote unquote classic costume is better or you know better designed sometimes it is sometimes it isn't but it just happens to be the one that i identify with them uh, right. you know personally because of my age or whatever but a lot of times the new costumes for a lot of these characters particularly in, on the marvel side i think um well they might not be my preferred costume if i look at it objectively they are better costumes <laughs> over a lot of the cases you know so. and, and that's why i consider lines like marvel legends and dcuc it, it could completely different from a line like Star Wars because there's only so much reference material to pull from for a, right. a movie baseline. So right. I can see people getting nitpicky about that kind of stuff, but mm-hmm. uh, toys are toys. Yeah. I yeah. like toys. Yeah, yeah. I'll buy toys. <laughs> I, as long as it's plastic and stays together, I'm good. Yeah, for the most I part. It. Yeah, I, <laughs> well, I, I, I agree with that because with, with me, with superhero lines, it's more about iconography. It's... Mm-hmm not necessarily oh a certain era of costume or the one that i grew up with or whatever it's just you know i think everybody kind of has that thing in their head that when they pick when somebody says a character's name it's that iconic image of them that pops into their their head Mm -hmm. because it's what has either been done for so long or what's used on a lot of branding materials or blah 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 Mm -hmm. that that's generally the direction that i try to go to with 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 superhero lines right Cool. Well, on that, I think we're I think we're about out of time. Do you, last comments. I, I like toys. <laughs> <laughs> and he talks about them on YouTube, so uh, check them out. Subscribe. Yeah, thank that. you, That's Robo. Cool. Thank oh, you yeah. so much for joining us today. That was really cool. Oh, this and, was um, fun. Yeah, and everybody definitely um, uh, check out the Foosh YouTube channel for both Robo's videos and also stuff from Cannonball Robo and stuff and from others. Robo and Cannonball just went over a thousand subscribers, so in, in four Woo-hoo! months, that's pretty, that, that's pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I, I, I I didn't expect it that fast, I'm, I'm, and it's still going. I mean, I think we broke a thousand a, couple, a few days ago, and now there's 32 on top of that, so I, I if people like it, we'll keep on doing it, so. Yeah, Robo yeah. Loves so definitely check it out. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll link to a few of the, a few of the particular videos that we've mentioned here today we'll put in the in the show description oh, uh, for this episode I mean, that's and, cool and, and if yeah. you want to subscribe it's just youtube.com slash the real fo- the real foosh that's hard to say out loud <laughs> the re- was there a fake foosh no, out there already actually there is so oh, oh no <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're like the real ghostbusters that's right <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go definitely check that out. Um, leave us a comment on um, a, in the comments field of, of this episode uh, or find us on Facebook, um, whether it's the Fooshcasts uh, page or the Foosh page. Uh, leave us comments. Let us know what you like in the Fooshcast, uh, what you don't like, um, what you'd like to hear us talk about, if there are guests that you would like us to try and get. Um, we, you know, we've mentioned before we will be having... Um, industry guests uh, you know the Fush has in the past um, both in the old Fush cast and also at the actual Fush site you know we've always had a long standing um, series of interviews and you know Q&As and stuff with industry people and we will be getting back to that so let us know who you would like us to seek out and um, and have on the show uh, and we will definitely you know give it our best shot um, you can also uh, shoot us an email if you want. Uh, send it to VB. He's at V E E B E E at Um You can find me on Twitter. I am Costume Contum. 
um, if you can if you can find that uh, <laughs> on um, <laughs> if you can spell on, on, that you if know. you can spell that. Um, but uh, and there'll be a link, you know, on the show description uh, page here. But uh, yeah, find us in, 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 on whatever platform you choose. Um, give us some feedback. Let us know where you want us to go. Um, until next time, I am Tony for Nick and Robo. Play nice. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye.